Welcome to WebSquare 5 Tutorials. In this video, we are going to check the frequently used properties of the grid view. The files we are going to use are located at WS5, Web Content, Training, Type 2. Use Training to UI XML, and Training to Info Search Text File. In addition, use Index XML File, under WS5, Web Content. We are going to check the major properties of the grid view, one of the main components of WebSquare 5. This is WebSquare Studio. Go to WS5. Web Content. Training. Type 2. Training to UI XML. Training to Info Search Text. Go to WS5. Web Content. Index XML. Training to UI XML is what we have worked on in Exercise 2 and 3. Click Search. The data is displayed on the grid view. Let us check the Index XML page. The Index page provides samples made by WebSquare 5. On the grid view, you can resize the column widths by dragging the columns, just like in an Excel file. You can also delete a certain column. For example, the zip column. Right-click the zip column, and select Delete column. The zip column is deleted. Save. In this page, the zip column exists. Reload the page, and click Search. We do not see the zip column anymore. However, this does not mean that the zip column data have been all deleted. Open the debugging menus and select View Data Collection. If we check the data list bound with the grid view, we can see that the zip column data still exists, not deleted from the data list. Now, let us check some major properties of the grid view. First, Auto Fit and Auto Fit Min Width. The grid view is not using the whole width of the page now. You can only manually resize the column widths by dragging the columns. Go back to the studio and click grid view. On the property view, search auto fit. Set the auto fit property as last column. Save. Reload the page. Click search. You can see only the last column is adjusted to use the full width of the page. Now, let us change the auto fit setting to all column. Save. Reload the page. Click search. All columns are evenly adjusted to use the full width of the page. If you make the browser size smaller at this point, you can see that all columns are still evenly divided and as a result some data is hard to read. What you can do is to set the auto fit min width. This is to define from which width the auto fit setting will be applied. For example, if the auto fit min width is 1000 pixels, the auto fit setting is applied when the page width is 1000 pixels, or more. You can see when the page width is less than 1000 pixels, a scroll bar is displayed on the grid view. Now, the input type of the grid view column. On the index page, select component list. On this page, you can check various samples of WebSquare 5 components. Select grid view and column types. You can check various column types that the grid view supports. Graphs, images, buttons, select box, and radio buttons. In order to set the input type of a grid view column, click the gender column. Search input type on the property view. Choose select as the input type of the gender column. Save. Reload the page. Click search. You can see that the gender column has select boxes, 
but does not show any options. In exercise 2, we bound the gender select box with the data list. We have to do the same for the select box in the grid view column. Double click the grid view column and bind with the data list in the same way as we did in exercise 2. Click OK. Save. Reload the page. Click Search. The gender column shows options in the select box. Now let us change the input type of the join date column. Select the join date column. Set the input type property as calendar. Save. The data is not in a calendar format. Reload. Click search. You can see that the join date column data is now in a calendar format. Now, let us check the property for data sorting on the grid view. Go to the component list page and select grid view and filtering sorting and moving. Double click a header for sorting. And, for multiple sorting, keep double clicking the headers while holding the control key. You can see the sorting sequence is displayed on each header in case of multiple sorting. Go back to the studio and select the entire grid view. Set the sortable property as true. Save. In the previous page without sortable setting, double clicking header makes no effect. So, reload the page to apply the sortable setting. Double clicking the header will sort the data, and you can also make multiple sorting. In case of multiple sorting, the sorting sequence is displayed in each header. Now, filtering related properties. For grid view column, it is use filter, and for the grid view, it is use filter list. On the filtering sorting and moving page, you can see the filters in the header. Using the filter, you can filter the data on the grid view. On the studio, select a header to enable filtering. And, set the use filter property as true. Save. Reload the page. Click search. You can see a filter button is displayed on the header. If you click the button, a filter is displayed. You can manually set the filtering conditions. Or, select the entire grid view on the studio. And, set the use filter list property as true. Save. Reload the page. Click search. Click the filter button. You can see the filtering items. This means you do not need to manually set the filtering conditions. The next properties are Ronum Visible and Row Status Visible. In the current grid view, there is no column to see the row numbers. Go back to the studio, select the entire grid view, and set the Ronum Visible property as true. Then, save. Reload the page. Click search. You can see a new column showing the row numbers has been added. You can set the width and the header label of the row numbers column using properties. For resizing, use Ronum width, and for header label, use Ronum header value. In this example, we set the Ronum width as 50 pixels and Ronum header value as number. Save. Reload the page. Click search. You can see the width of the row number column is 50 pixels, and the header label is number. Now, let us add a column showing status of the row. Select the entire grid view, and set the row status visible property as true. Save and reload the page. Click search.
A new column showing the row status is newly displayed. About the row status column, we will cover in more detail in the next video, that is exercise 5. Same as in the row numbers column, you can set the width and the header label of the row status column using properties. Set the row status width as 100 pixels and row status header value as status. Save and reload the page. You can see the width of the row status column is 100 pixels and the header label is status. Now, text align property of the grid view column. In the current grid view, all text are aligned to the center. Select the position column. Set the text align property as right. Select the roll column. And, set the text align property as left. Save. Reload the page. Click search. You can see the text in the position column is aligned to the right, and the text in the roll column to the left. The last property we are going to check is read only. In default, the grid view data is all changeable. However, you may not want some column data to be changeable. For this example, select the code column. And, set the read-only property as true, which means that the column data is only readable. Save. And reload the page. Click search. You cannot change the code column data. However, you can still change the data of other columns. Only the code column data is not changeable. There are many more properties than what we have covered. These are tips to quickly find the properties you want. First, use the property view on the studio. Click the grid view, and you can see the list of the properties as well as the description of the properties. Secondly, go to WTEC site. Select documentation, English docs, and API guide. You can check all APIs of the WebSquare components. Select Grid View Component. All APIs of the Grid View are displayed. You can see the description and the samples of each API. Lastly, you may search a property name by guessing a keyword. For example, there is a property that allows column moving. The present page does not allow column moving. So, let us put the move as the keyword in the property view. From the search result, we can guess the column move might be what we are looking for. Set the column move property as true. Save and reload the page. Now, we can move the columns by dragging them. This is the end of the exercise for video. Thank you for watching.